Hello everybody, how you doing? It's me Paddy from Across the Shuck and uh, coming at you with a bit of a different video today. You've seen by the title, it's UK Knife Laws and how it affects me as a collector, but how it affects anybody that wants to buy a knife in the UK. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give you all the laws. You should always check your own local laws. But in the UK, basically, here's a, a UK PK made by Spyrical for this market over here specifically which we really appreciate i'm allowed a knife that is a cutting edge of less than three inches it is not allowed to lock so it obviously has to be a slip joint with no lock and that's that's the rule basically that's all i'm allowed now the interpretation for what is legal and what is not legal is still down to individual police officers what they deem to be dangerous or a carry you shouldn't have now there's the first problem once you give um another human being the power to decide something that can be outside what the law is that there's it's it's just a problem full stop it doesn't matter what sort of environment you're in um a policeman's having a bad day he sees you with this knife thinks he can just say that even if you haven't had it out he's just checked your pockets for whatever reason he can say you're carrying a dangerous weapon and i'm going to confiscate it gone you really don't have much recourse now being a, a 60 odd year old man that really doesn't affect me um I'm never, you know, I'm not going to do anything with this knife that would make a police officer want to stop me. But it could happen. And especially for our younger people and the people that we need to, to come behind us and want this tool to be part of their EDC. I mean, it, you know, I know in most states in America uh, and around the world, now Europe is a bit different. But you can let me know what yours are. It'd be lovely to see. I know what America sort of is, but it'd be lovely to hear about Australia, Canada, Africa, China, Japan, wherever you are. I know of subs all over the place. India, what are your laws and how does it affect you? Please down below, please answer. I'd love to hear it. But for me, I can only talk about me today. And this is basically all I'm allowed, a three inch, knife, a three inch cutting edge and a non-locking knife. So let's work on that premise. That's quite difficult to be a knife collector. It's not difficult if you want to collect, collect traditional knives. You know, you can collect traditional knives because most traditional knives, I'm saying most, not all, but are an under three inch cutting edge. They don't look like a threatening knife. But, so if I'm out and the police officer stops this, this is a pen knife. This is not going to get me arrested more than likely depending where i am what's happening but on, on a, just a normal day for me walking down the town a police officer is not going to take this off me if i have it out and i'm cutting a bit of string and he sees it because it's a little pen knife now the blade on that is exactly the same cutting edge as the blade on this and this is a hinderer and it's under three inches it's non-locking so there's, there's nothing different with this cutting edge as a tool. It's exactly the same, different blade steel, different shape, but legally it's exactly the same as this pen knife. Now, the difference being on any one of these, here's an old Wolfson home. I'll just try showing some knives that are a bit different. There's a Wolfson home pen knife. It, yeah, it looks smaller. This is only about a two and a quarter inch cutting edge. This is about a three inch cutting edge, just under a three inch cutting edge. So, this is perfectly legal so is this the chances of this getting taken off me is next to nothing what do you think a police officer who sees something like that being taken out to cut a piece of string in the street will this give him an opportunity to use his power to take this knife off me and the answer is probably yes because knife crime in the uk like a lot of other countries around the world uh, be it knife or gun it's increasing knife crime is increasing and that basically is the problem it really is increasing over here so for a long time i was angry and fed up with the laws and you know 
Is it because you get older, you get a bit more mellow and you try to think of ways round a problem rather than just suffer in the problem, which gets you nowhere other than an angry old man making YouTube videos. But so, you know, this knife is a 300 pound knife. I don't want to give this to a police officer for any reason. I just don't want to give it to him. So what, what else has changed? The knife laws in the UK are changing. We could, before we could have had any knife in our own homes, for personal use in our own homes, as long as we didn't take it outside. That was great. That was great. And it's changing, so it's not so great. This, to get this in the UK now is nearly impossible. A flipping knife. If it's stopped by customs, they'll, they can seize it because they're stopping they're stopping flickable knives from coming into the UK. That's just a nightmare, do you know what I mean? That is a nightmare. Now, they're not doing it all the time, it's just if it gets stopped in customs. But are you gonna risk getting a knife confiscated? The likes of Heine Haynes and the big companies over here don't sell flickable knives anymore. They don't bring them into the country because they're not allowed to. So you're stuck with knives that are either thumb stud opening or you've got bench made knives with your thumb stud opening but can go like that, do you know what I mean? So this is obviously, <laughs> this little bench made here or this, let me have this a better, if you want a stabby blade, here's, a, here's another spider co. This is opened by the thumb hole, it's, which is legal to sell here still. This is now becoming illegal. Do they look that much different as far as I'm going to poke you with something? And will they do the same poking job? Of course they will. They're locked and they're going to poke. It's probably a more pokeable blade than this. But this is, this is legal for me to have in my house. This is now being made illegal in the UK. So they really are doing everything they possibly can. This is my Chris Reeves. This is still legal. It's a thumb stud. Uh, it's a nice little small Chris Reeves. This is the small. So uh, this is still legal to collect and have in your own home, which is lovely. And it's nice to collect them and use it about the house. But the reason why, I suppose this is all started because I'm starting to buy up the center here is slip knives and, the, and slip joint knives. So these are knives that are two-handed opening. Good size blade in that. Good three inch, nearly three inch cutting edge on this knife. Full four finger grip. Beautiful knife. Strong back. Really is a good working knife. And I love it. And it's got the most beautiful bone on it. So I'm starting now to buy more and more slip joints. But it's not because I don't want to buy the other knives. It's because I'm trying to adapt to the law. And here's my thought. I was lying in bed thinking of this last night. In this last year, what I've tried to do is not push my knives as much. I tried to get my grandchildren in it. I got one half into it and then he sort of disappeared again. I, you know, I've, I've not tried to push knives on people because my grandchildren had have never used knives or played with pen knives. It just wasn't allowed. Their mummies wouldn't allow them. They wouldn't have been allowed out with them. Because if they were stopped by the police, they would more than likely get taken to the station and mummy or daddy would have been called down because they had a pen knife on them. How shocking. I mean, I grew up with bowie knives, big heavy naval knives, just dodgy knives that were nearly as more dangerous to you if you'd have stuck them in them because they were cheap and nasty. But the younger kids of today don't have that privilege of having a tool, carrying it about with them and knowing the benefits of having a knife. So I'm going to stop fighting the law. I, you know, I, I'm really, I'm not going to order any more flipping knives because I don't see the point of losing it at customs or getting getting the police coming around knocking my door. I just don't want that anymore. I don't want, so a lot of my knives now, yes, they're going to be traditional, but I'm also going to keep up with the modern traditional. This is the most beautiful little knife. This is a little real steel um, Luna. It is a cracking little knife, beautiful little knife, four finger grip, D2, absolute great little blade. So these are the knives that I'm going to go for. 
Now I can go up, I can go to the, this is the uh, quiet carry, again, modern traditional, slip joint, so it's perfectly legal, I can carry it, it's the same size as most of these little pen knives that are down here, do you know what I mean, there's not much difference in size, not going to offend a policeman, I wouldn't have thought, but again, this his decision will be final. Heine Haynes made this beautiful one this year, or last year I should say. This is the Heine Haynes slip joint. Absolutely beautiful detent on it, but it is just a slip joint, two-handed opening, and a really good S35 VN blade. Absolutely beautiful. Isn't it S35 VN? I'm saying that on that. Yes, S35 VN. And this is under £100. Just under hundred, but £89 I think it is. Titanium S35 VN, a beautiful pocket knife. Slim, beautiful. I, I done one the other week there that's, you know, it's a two-handed opener. This was from Whitby. Just a little pen knife that's quite happily going to sit in my pocket if I'm going out. But in reality, in reality, now what I'm tempted to do is carry my pocket knives. Ones that look like a pocket knife. You know, that a, that a policeman will see and not get... Oh, God, what sort of a nice hat you got in your pocket? So I'm starting to put these in my pocket with, you know, this is a full-size ETC for me. Absolutely. It's over about two and a half inches cutting edge, full ETC for anything I'm going to ever have to do when I'm outside the door here. Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean bushcrafting because if you're going camping on that, you can take your camping knives as long as you've got the reason for carrying them. You can take a bigger knife too. If you work on a building site and you want a bigger knife, you need it as part of your job, say as a joiner or whatever. As long as you've got a reason to carry them, you can carry them. But again, the law states that it's up to the police officer that is dealing with you, whether he deems it to be a dangerous weapon or you're using it in a dangerous manner, likely to cause offence or scare people. It's too open. I just wish they would change that law to write, this is what you can carry, no options. And then you can work from there. So my idea is to stop fighting the law. It's too ambiguous, it's too open to interpretation and on other people's thought process. So now, as a knife collector and a knife uh, lover, when I go out, I'm going to take, and I made this decision nearly overnight, I'm going to take a pen knife with me, big and a small one, uh, like the little one I showed yesterday, the little rattler, a lovely little knife to pair up with this to take out with me, because that's completely legal, and I'm not going to get stopped. I can enjoy these other knives in the house. And I thank the companies for making these other knives that I can share them in the house. Now, I can take something like this out and I'm not going to feel too bothered. If I know I'm going to do a bit of heavy cutting while I'm out that day, I can take this with me and a small pocket knife. And I don't then have to bring this out when I'm out walking about or I'm in a shop and I want to cut a bit of string or as I would do, the two shoes that are done together. I hate that, so I just cut it so I can try a shoe on. <laughs> I, I have digressed again, haven't I? Right, stop. So I, I've decided now that I'm going to do it. Now, I'm enjoying collecting both the modern, this is a beautiful modern pen knife. And I'm enjoying collecting the older models pen knife. And that's the joy I'm getting at the minute. It was the joy that used to be CRKT, Spyderco, Benchmade. These were the knives that I loved. And, you know, when I'm down the caravan, I can put these in my pocket because I know nobody's going to bother me. I'm not going to bother anybody else. And I can walk about and carry them. And I'll still do that. Because that's when I, you know, I'm going to use harder use is when I'm down there. But... The one thing this year I'd said that I wasn't going to do, wasn't going to hassle my wee grandchild anymore. The one who did like knives uh, and try to get him to be a knife lover because it really shouldn't be like that. You know, and things have changed this year in my life that when I, when I sat back last night and I was thinking about this conversation, in the last year, the little grandchild who liked the knives and then went away from them actually wanted a pen knife again. And uh, I gave him, you know, you were on the channel when I gave him the Swiss Army. His older brother, who's three years older, who's 19, or almost 19, then last week said he would like one. 
That's the first time he's ever said he would like one. Now, his brother had them before, so whatever changed, he said he would like one. And I had such joy in giving him a knife. So I haven't pushed it, but they've seen what I have. He's seen what his brother's had. And because they're not, it's not an aggressive weapon. I don't count them as an aggressive weapon. I don't talk about them as an aggressive weapon because they're not. To me, this is a tool. This is not a weapon. Yes, they can be used as weapons, but so can a sharp pokey stick. Do you know what I mean? These can be used as weapons, but so can a stick or a baseball bat or whatever you want to use. If you're going to injure somebody else, you can use a broken glass, which will cut you worse than what these will do. So I, I, I sat back and there's two grandchildren now that have got pocket knives in their pocket. And I'm quite happy for them. And if they get stopped by the police and they call them down, I'll quite happily go down to the police station and explain to them why they've got them, that I gave them to them and they're legal. And as long as I haven't been trying to stab somebody, which they wouldn't. They're two nice lads. But do you know what I mean? I'm quite happy to follow that up, not having their mother to do it. That that would be my responsibility because I gave them to them. My wife, this last six months or so, maybe a wee bit longer, has started carrying two pocket knives. One that stays in her bag and one that sits by her chair in the house. And I see her using them regularly. Almost every day she uses her little pocket knife. She knits and sews and does all them things that a, a woman are, are good at. And uh, she uses her knife. She uses it to open, open package in the kitchen. So there's three people in my family that I have influenced subconsciously. Now, I haven't pushed them. You do not push my wife to do anything. She just doesn't do it. And rightly so. She decides what she's going to carry and what she's going to use herself. But three people in my family this year that have come round to start using a pocket knife. Now, to me, that's massive. To, <clears throat> to other people, that's maybe not a whole lot. But I think by me showing that I'm going to stick to the law and when I'm out or go to their houses, I'm not going to carry these big ones anymore because sometimes I do, just for the hell of it, when I'm going indoors to their house, I'll have a big knife in and uh, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to abide by the law. And carry UK legal knives. This is a UK legal knife, but I have to be very careful because of what it looks like, which is ridiculous. Because of what it looks like, it could be construed as an aggressive knife to a sheep like there who reports me to the police. Policeman comes along and says, Yes, I agree with you. That's aggressive. Bang, knife gone. 300 quid down the drain. Or go to court, go through your lawyer, whatever you want to do. It's going to cost me money and grievance. So what's the point? The laws are there, and as a citizen, whether you agree with them or not, and I don't agree with them, but I agree with Brexit. We've got it, and I'm quite happy to follow that law. If we had lost a Brexit vote, I'd have gone stead in Europe because that was a, a decision made by the country. So you can't pick and choose what laws you're going to do. You either follow them or you don't. You can try and change them. I'm too old for that. I'm too old to go and fight for knives because I'm on a bait and docket, to be honest with you. That's not going to happen at the moment, the way knife crime is. But what I can do is abide by the law and let other people see that you can carry a working tool in a country that's become so frightened of anything that has a... Anything that's at all aggressive or can be construed as aggressive... How a pocket knife ever got there, I don't know. I mean, how our forefathers ever get through without pocket knives, I have no idea. My grandfather had a knife for his pipe. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, why is this all of a sudden, this knife now becoming a dangerous tool? And it is because kids are going out and using them to kill each other. And that's wrong. And I would love that to stop. And I would do anything to change that perception. But it's really difficult in this country. They make it difficult for someone like me to enjoy a hobby and, and progress it further so this year what i'm going to the other thing i'm going to try and do in my local community once this uh covid is beaten and we're getting back on the track i'm now going to try and start knife meets in my little town i'm going to try and get a wee room or a hall even if it's just my house but i'm going to contact the police and say look i'm having friends down here going to bring pocket knives down we're going to sit in the house and we're going to discuss them we'll put them all away in cases in the backs of their cars and they'll go back again. I just want to let you know so that if anybody, they're not going to see any knives outside, 
But if anybody wondered why people are coming in with a briefcase to Stephen's flat, this is the reason why. One, it gets me talking to local police officers. Two, it clears me for being raided. And three, I want to get together with other knife lovers and share this hobby. And it only takes one of them to bring a son along or bring a friend along who's thinking about getting in and they come and see us and they can talk about it. To me, that's a better way of spreading than fighting for it when I'm on a beaten docket at the minute because of knife crime in the UK. There's nobody going to have any sympathy with me carrying a bigger knife like this. I have no chance whatsoever. So, I can legally have this because I had it before they stopped this. But I can't use it. Uh, yes, I can have it in the house. But now somebody coming behind me is not going to be able to order these because it's going to be illegal to order them. I can prove that I had this before and I have its birth date and when it was sent to me. So, there's what it's like living in the UK and some of the decisions I'm having to take because of other people's thoughts on a working tool. That bugs me, but I have to abide by the local law. So that's the reason why I've been doing more on pen knives, collecting knives uh, like GEC, like Shat and Morgan, like um, all the old English manufacturers. And this is an old Chattanooga. I can't even remember the name of it, but an old American knife pre-case um, and British handmade knives. That's where I'm going. All them and, and any knives from across the world. I have some Spanish uh, knives in there. I have Italian knives in there that are all UK legal. And they're the knives that I'm going to use and carry. But I fear that the likes of buying this big hinderer, it's great. It's a knife that I, you know, I'm glad I've got this and I can use it whenever I want. But I'm a 60 year old man. I don't think I would give one of these to my grandchildren to carry about. For the simple fact that it's £300 and he could lose it very, very quickly through no fault of his own. And that's where laws are sometimes very difficult to follow. So there, I don't know what you think of this. Um, anybody else in the UK feel the same way or they feel differently? Um, I don't know. I don't feel there's another option other than just to show good husbandry of a hobby and a knife that I love. You know, sh show that this is an inanimate object this and this is the things that make it either a tool or a weapon and this is connected to this up here the top of the screen you can't see a noggin so you know my noggin will never use this as a weapon this is a tool there you go paddy's away i've got a wee cup of cow tea here i'm going to go and refresh I have my wee puffer. It was nice to have a chat with you. I've Sorry, I have to do a draw to you. I'll do that tomorrow. I kept putting it off. There was a, a hidden draw. I'll do it tomorrow for those of you waiting for it. Really, really sorry. Um, But I just, the reason I'm doing so many videos then is because we're in lockdown and I feel going back again like we did the last time. I just want to put a bit more content out so that it gives you something to watch and listen to. I know this is probably a lot of old twaddle, but it's genuinely what's happening in my knife collecting. I'm having to reevaluate and rethink. And, uh, you know, we do that. We all do that along the line somewhere. But this is a new one where I think I need to stop fighting the law. It is what it is. But the more people that you can bring into this fold of knife collecting, the more it becomes a normal hobby, the more chance you have of that hobby being accepted the more chance that people talk about a pen knife. Oh, Stephen's got a great hobby. Patty's got a great hobby. Dave's got a great hobby. He collects pen knives. You should see some of them. They're beautiful. Somebody comes along to see your collection. So for me in the UK, sadly, it's ruled out an awful lot of knives, i.e. flippers. We're not allowed uh, automatic knives because they're more dangerous than a flipper. I have no idea. But <laughs> like I said, begrudgingly, I'm going to follow the law. I'm not going to order flippers anymore um, because you're not supposed to. Uh, it is changing nearly year on year over here what you are allowed to do and what you aren't. It is a nanny state, but it's my nanny state. I love it and I feel like I should be going along with the law rather than fighting it and promoting the fact that there is knives out there we can have. There is knives out there we can use on a daily basis.
Good night all. Paddy's away. Sorry for the waffle. Take care now. Bye-bye.